I'm lucky enough to have been contacted by a gent called Moran who is launching this, the Pearl Charger, on Kickstarter later this month. The Charger appeals to me because it claims some impressive stats, but most importantly for me here in the solar shed, this doesn't need to be mains powered. The unit itself is pretty compact and uh, quite funky looking too. There are four USB ports on the front and the thing feels pretty solid. This is an anodized aluminium top and uh, bottom and then there's some sort of uh, composite here making up some layers on the side. On the top there's a uh, LED for each of the channels and there's also a watt meter which I think is quite a nice addition. And on the back there's a 5.5-2.1mm barrel jack which takes obviously DC. So uh, this looks like quite a nice little charger. Now I mentioned it claims some impressive stats, so what are they? Well straight away you can see that each port is marked as 2.7 amps. Now typically even the top end charger is 2.4 amps um, at 5 volts, nothing more than that. So this has got a little bit more available to it for those really power hungry devices. But also each one of these channels is claimed to be completely independent of each other. Each one has adaptive charging, so they'll charge iPhones and Samsung and all those various different types of devices um, in the proper manner. There is of course that integrated watt meter there at the back and also it has a wide input voltage. There's an interesting feature which I hope to take a quick look at, which is wire compensation. It also claims fault recovery and reverse polarity protection. And, well, I hope I've got time to test them all. Now, the Pearl Charger was supplied with this uh, US uh, pinned um, adapter here, but it is um, international voltage, 100 to 240 volts AC there, and the output of this is 15 volts and 4 amps, so 60 watts. There's uh, plenty of power in that, uh, but it also came with a standard cigar accessory uh, car uh, adapter here um, so we know it works off 15 volts and we know it will work off 12 volts so uh, we're already seeing that this is going to work quite nicely in the shed where my battery bank can be anywhere in between I don't know 12 volts and 14 and a bit volts now I've got my lead acid battery bank connected to the back of the pearl charger and I've put in a power meter here at the front and if we turn the uh, lead acid battery bank on yes there we go we can see we've got 5.08 volts and no current flowing because there's nothing here connected to the uh, power meter but i'm going to put in one of these resistive loads i've set it to one amp for the moment so if we plug that in uh, we can see, yeah, there is one amp flowing, just a fraction over, according to this meter. Uh, but straight away, I've uh, noticed that the voltage has jumped up to 5.23 volts. Uh, previously, it was 5.08. Um, so I can start ticking things off my list already. And my list said uh, one of the features was wire compensation. So as more current is being taken by the device the voltage increases ever so slightly so uh, let's just turn this up to two amps and uh, well that's dropped back a bit but it's still way over five volts and that does account for some voltage drop over a wire so yeah do you know what I'm going to give it the wire compensation. That's absolutely uh, fine. It is increasing the voltage uh, to uh, combat any voltage drop. Looking down on top of the pearl charger, we can see uh, two interesting things here. One, that the uh, OED here on channel 3 has illuminated because that's the channel 
I'm drawing current from and we can also see it's saying uh, 5.2 watts 5.2 watts being pulled across there I've turned the uh, load back down to 1 amp so 1 amp at 5 volts is yeah 5 watts so I can increase that and uh, when I do that adapts there and we can see we've got 10.2 watts now being taken across just channel 3 so uh, that's interesting to know and that little segment segment display arrangement there seems to work quite nicely i'm not sure what this button does okay you can actually turn off the watt meter and turn it back on again so that's really good so uh, if this is by your bedside or something you can press and hold you know press and hold yeah you can press and hold and no how did I turn it off a minute ago? Hmm. Um, there we go. Yeah, so you press and hold and the meter goes off. And then, of course, you can tap it and see that information again. 10 watts and that resistor, well, it's starting to give off a bit of smoke and smell a little bit. Now, I've had to rearrange things slightly for the next test, which is the 2.7 amps per socket test. Uh, so I'm now using the Portapal meter because it's powered all by itself. It has a battery uh, inside it so that uh, it doesn't take any power whatsoever from the charger. And I'm going to use this uh, small DC USB electronic load, uh, which should have uh, plenty of... Uh, ability to get to up to the 2.7 amps so uh, if i start uh, turning that load up we can see we've got a uh, half an amp there and we're beyond one amp now and i'm still turning that uh, little pot on there we're up to two amps there almost exactly look at that 10.2 watts because the voltage is there at 5.1 volts um, that's still holding nicely and if we increase a bit further so most chargers will uh, top out around there 2.4 amps but of course this one claims 2.7 amps so let's see what happens when we get up to 2.7 amps we're quite close there the voltage remains over 5 volts 2.7 amps there 13.6 watts and the voltage is still above 5 volts what happens if i uh, take it over the 2.7 volts well uh, oh, that voltage is starting to collapse there and uh, yeah that voltage has disappeared entirely so uh, at 2.75 amps uh, this starts to protect itself the voltage collapses and uh, sadly that is its limit but it is the limit that it says it's got 2.7 amps it's perfectly capable of drawing 2.7 amps so look at this i've run out of meters and loads but uh, you can see there on the left hand meter we've got five volts at 2.7 amps on the right hand meter it's reading just slightly under 5 volts at 2.65 amps and then we've got two 2 amp loads in the middle which I shouldn't touch because it'll be very very hot. It claims 48 watts are being drawn from the charger. Well to be honest that's all I can throw at this thing. What's that? 2.7 plus 2.7 is 5.4 plus uh, 4 there so that's 9.4 so yeah 9.5 amps i'm pulling from this charger 48 watts at 5 volts yeah well i'm not sure i can throw anything more at this what about that claim that the pill charger has a wide input voltage well when you dig deeper that wide input voltage is from 7 to 17 volts so that is truly excellent here in the solar shed with my 12 volt lead acid battery system but of course it's great for cars and trailers and caravans and that sort of thing as well it does also mean you could power it directly off a couple of lithium cells obviously fully charged these are uh, 8.4 volts when they're in series so let's give that a go let's unplug my lead acid battery system 
plug in these two lithium ion cells and plug in the meter at the front the lights go on the watt meter shows up and we're pulling just under two amps at just over five volts well yeah that seems to work absolutely perfectly and of course with that wide input between 7 and 17 volts well that means you could have a 2s lithium pack connected to this a 3s or in fact a 4s which should top out at about 16.8 volts so you're getting quite close to the maximum there but yeah i think a 4s lithium ion pack might work quite nicely i'm running out of tests here but here's another one where i hope to prove two separate points here we have channel one which is uh, illuminated you can see we are pulling five watts or thereabouts 5.2 volts one amp being drawn across channel one and i have this little usb cable here which uh, i've chopped apart and i've shorted the positive and the negative together so this is a fault situation so what i'm hoping will happen is channel four which i'm going to plug this into goes into a fault mode and channel one remains working without any problem whatsoever and this should prove that these channels are completely isolated that's claim number one and claim number two that this has fault detection and uh, i'm not about to burn down the shed so uh, without further ado let's plug in the short and straight away channel four goes into an error mode with a red led here and channel one remains working absolutely fine so uh yeah two more ticks hopefully you'll realize why i've left this test to the very end i've now connected the pearl charger in reverse polarity to see its reverse polarity protection the negative of my power supply is attached to the positive going into the pearl charger so let's turn on the power supply it's supplying 10 volts and absolutely no current is flowing whatsoever let's plug in my meter here and of course it doesn't turn on the pill charger is in protective mode so uh, let's disconnect that for a second and plug my lead acid battery bank back in and yes there it goes the meter powers up we've got five volts on the output so this was absolutely fine with uh, the reverse polarity attached uh, to the input so another tick in the box so i for one want to have a quick look inside so i've removed the four screws and uh, the aluminium anodized lid just lifts off quite nicely and we can see straight away there the uh, the layers of the construction there's some light pipes there for those leds and uh, the uh, matrix there for the uh, the seven segment type display now interestingly i've been told by moran this particular one is 3d printed and yes i can absolutely see that it is 3d printed but obviously once this launches on kickstarter i believe that's going to be injection molded but look at that pcb that looks really really tidy and i say it in that manner because i believe these first early versions here is my number three that's pretty exciting if it is um these first versions have been handmade now obviously again once this launches that's clearly not going to be the case they hope to make enough of these to have them machined in a factory um but yeah we can see straight away let me get something to point out that they're clearly completely separate channels with exactly the same um circuitry uh, supporting each output this is clearly the section for port one with its leds and its inductor and controller and all sorts of things there clearly each one of these is completely separate so uh yeah i'm pretty impressed there's a low value resistor there which is obviously being used as a shunt for the uh, watt meter which presumably is powered by this one which is an 80 tiny 84 so yeah i'm guessing that's doing the watt meter calculations and look is that an isp header i think it is and there's also yeah txrx power and ground possibly 
Yeah, I like this very much. And uh, yeah, so it says input 7 to 17 volts, which is already found out. Output 5 volts, 11 amps. And this is an early revision from Pearl Technologies. And uh, yeah, is that all PCB? Yeah, I think it is. All PCB have printed the PCB. So there we have the Pearl Charger launching on Kickstarter very soon and hopefully in shops not long after that. I have to say I've been really impressed with the build quality and the feature list of what is, you know, essentially quite a simple thing, a USB charger. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.